There are few men of whom we can say he changed the world. Jack Kilby is one of those men. His invention of the monolithic integrated circuit, the microchip, laid the foundation for the entire field of modern microelectronics. He's certainly one of the, uh, the great people of the world, one of those rare people that come along once in a lifetime. I wanted to work on what was then called circuit miniaturization and uh, chose TI as one of the more promising places. They were really the only one that offered to let me work full time on the kind of thing I wanted to do. I could have started at Motorola and they thought that uh, I could work on this stuff half time and work on their transistor products the other half. I hired Jack just before vacation, so he didn't have any accrued vacation, so he had to work over, over vacation. And the big deal in those days was miniaturization, make things smaller, make things smaller. I had looked at a couple of other approaches to miniaturization. As I began to see how these would fit into TI, it became very clear that the only thing that TI could make effectively at that time were semiconductor products. So since it had to be semiconductors, I began to think, about how much you could do with semiconductors and realize that you could make all the circuit elements that you needed that way. Well, the initial process was mostly in thinking about it, sketching things on paper, not much physical uh, effort for several months. At the end of that period, we actually began to try to build something and uh, the first circuit was finished in September. Yeah, I think uh uh, many people do not realize today that the, the ultimate uh, worth of the integrated circuit was not universally recognized in the early 60s. Uh, it was uh, viewed by, by many serious thinkers with great skepticism. Uh, I remember at a conference in Seattle, and I think it was uh, uh, 1965 or 66, uh, I was almost hooted off the stage for having uh, made some positive comments about the future of integrated circuits. You would think it would catch on, wouldn't you? You think everybody grabbed it and said it would be the ideal thing? No, it wasn't going to be the ideal thing. Too hard to make, it was, the yields were low, you couldn't make the damn things and all that. And some of our major customers, and I can show you papers they wrote, saying that the, the engineers don't want it. Because our customers for circuits, for transistors, were engineers who designed circuits. The uh, traditional circuit designers saw it as a great threat to their uh, professional livelihood. Uh, the, uh, 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 many companies based their success on their creative circuit design and saw this as a great threat to them. I had many people in my company saying, got to cut this out, it's costing too much money because we want to work on the germanium and silicon transistors. The operating people at the time uh, were not much enthused. They were prepared to watch it for another five years and see what happened, but uh, they didn't really want to do much. The lucky thing that happened to us was the Minuteman missile. They had to go to miniature electronics. What was more ideal than an than a integrated circuit? So the Air Force sponsored the integrated circuit. So the Air Force people up in Dayton are responsible really for commercializing integrated circuits because with that background we were able then to develop farther along and to show it really was practical. I thought that uh, if it could be made successfully that it would have a big impact on electronics as we knew it. I had no idea of how much uh, a million to one cost reduction would expand the field of electronics. I don't think anybody did. The inventor needs some time to think about it, convince himself that it's feasible, begin to think about how he can sell it to the organization. Some of the uh, engineers and scientists must have slack time to think about things. They can't be uh, planned and scheduled down to the last uh, uh, second of the year. Once you've programmed out what everybody in the group is going to be doing for the year, there's no room for 
uh, this other kind of thing. The management must also be tolerant of some failure as long as with success because the, the yield of, of innovation is probably pretty low. 10% may be a successful and 90% of failures. You have chosen the successful projects from that time. There were a hell of a lot of them that weren't. The best thing I did for Jack was to get him isolated from the forces that stop projects <laughs> and, and, to, and to encourage him and find money for him and, and also to acquaint him with other things because in a company like TI was in, we had silicon, we had, we, I hired a man for other things to make uh, the photolithic masks and so we had, we had these things that were tools for Jack's invention. At the close of our interview, we asked Jack how he feels when he sees this photograph of the first integrated circuit. I feel bad when I see it. It wouldn't have had to be that ugly. If I had known I was going to have to look at it for 40 years, I'd have prettied it up a little bit. <laughs>